Yeah, David Dread of Steel Pulse, and I'm saying heal to Lion Voice because it's time that the lion have its voice, have its own story. Says I'm stepping out here. Hear me now. Yeah, the lion's voice. Raw. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to use this earth strong of Empress Men and told my brethren again. How do you select? What were the qualities His Majesty might have seen in Empress Menin? And when you, you look at the speech he gave at her passing, he said there was nothing that they disagreed on, you know. Uh, they, she never let a third party come in and intervene in any problems that they had with each other. If they had any issues, nobody but them would know. And these are the things. That, so discretion is a key trait, you know, when you're looking at, uh, for a wife, you know, you have to look for a woman who carries herself with discretion. So anybody that's too out there, the youths then would say, for the streets, we leave them out there. You know, um, these are things we need to be teaching our young brethren so that they select queens in this Armageddon. Because it's Armageddon time, we see the inflation, the cost of food skyrocketing. So we don't have no time right now to joke around in the streets right now as Rastafari. We have to return to our militant origin. Well, Lion Vice, tell them that's the people first choice. Lion Vice, make the lion let them feel nice. Lion Vice, be the lion comes with sacrifice. Lion Vice, got to show the people them the life. Lion Vice. Greetings in that divine name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I, the first. Glory and honor in the name of his chosen queen, Empress Waziro Menin. My name is Kwasi Bansu, aka the Chasmach Kwasi, aka Ras Kwasi, aka the Reading Ras, aka the Pan-African Happy Man. I'm an entertainment attorney, I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an actionist, and right now, I'm the host of the Lion Voice. Welcome to Lion Voice episode 80. We have an extra special episode for the item today because we are going to be celebrating the birth of the mother of the movement, Empress Wazero Menin. The balance, the divine balance. She was born April 3rd. Rastafari all over the earth will be celebrating her earth strong. So this episode is levicated to Empress Menin. But before I get into the episode, I have to big up the Lion Pride. We just passed 700 subscribers. Big up the Lion Pride. Big up the Lion Pride on Patreon. You see I'm talking with my nice microphone that was purchased through the contributions of the Lion Pride on Patreon because the Lion Pride on Patreon, let me just give them a shout out. They could be just investing in Netflix platform. They could just be investing in Amazon. But you know what? They say they love this type of content. So they invested. They see the vision of where we're going. So if you want to join the Lion Pride on Patreon, you want to become part of the tip of the spear of the movement that we are pushing forward join the patreon give your support to the platform the lion pride in general is growing every day that mean if you subscribe you're part of the lion pride so i have to big up all of the people who again love the content drop in the comments uh, and so forth this channel is 95 percent male participation um, this was Women's History Month. We're closing out Women's History Month. So I wanted to give some content. So Lion Talk for the month. We've been uh, interviewing some dynamic Rastafari sisters 
So I want to just take some time. We're going to seal up with Empress Menin to encourage. If you're a sister, drop a comment and let me know that you are watching the platform. Because YouTuber tell me say a beer man uh, on the platform. Uh, because the majority uh, rules uh, in most cases, I want to uh, talk about Empress Menin. But I want to talk to I and I Bridgen. Uh, we have a lot of brethren in this movement who have baby mothers they didn't work out with their partner and what that tells us is that we have a problem or a challenge with mate selection and i want to use the earth strong of empress menin who by all accounts was a proverbs 31 virtuous woman i want to use her life and and the example of her and how she connected with his majesty and how she governed herself with his majesty as an example of what brethren should be looking for in their mate and for the sisters who are watching um i want the item to let i know if i'm correct in in the assessment so let i'm on know in the comments you know if i'm on track because we have to have both sides to to have this conversation we're having a conversation with the family right now uh, in celebration of Empress Men and Earth Strong. I don't know if you're going to get this conversation anywhere else on the internet. That means we're going to look at the life of Empress Menin. however, from a bridging perspective in terms of your mate selection. So who was Empress Menin? The Jasmash Tiferi wrote this about his wife in his autobiography. Her character is such that, apart from goodness, there is no evil or malice in her heart. Ever since we were married, we lived together, by virtue of her being fertile, in one family sharing joy as well as sadness. After the skirmish of Segele, some nobles, believing it would be impossible to live with Princess Menin after the war with her grandfather, King Mikael, suggest that she and Ras Teferi divorce. When Teferi declined the opposition and their marriage was saved, this was surely seen as a test of men in strength and honesty. Her resolve to stay with her husband, coupled with her fervent Christianity, were to prove instrumental to men in later receiving the highest rank of empress. It is emphasized in many holy books that marriage is a key to good fortune. It is believed that when a wedding takes place in harmony with God's will, it is blessed with material and spiritual wealth and many children. As their union was not merely an arrangement, but also the will of God, Teferi and Menin had a marriage full of love, peace, and happiness that lasted over 50 years. When life's challenges intruded their marriage, Wazira Menin Asfwa turned to God for guidance. Empress Menin, let's not get it twisted. She was a royal princess born on the 3rd of April, 1891. In the province of Wolo um, to no noble family. Um, she's the granddaughter of the great Nigos Mikael, formerly Muhammad Ali. And if you read Haile Selassie's Ethiopia, um, my book, we have a whole um, chapter about Wolo, uh, Ras Mikael, the rise of Nigos Mikael. And this is a key part of the whole. Um, origin story of Tafari Makonin because Empress Menin comes from a family that was in direct opposition to her kingman being on the throne of King David. So you see the intrigue. That's why I'm excited to write the future volumes of Haile Selassie's Ethiopia because people don't know story yet. This is a, a epic love story. The story of Haile Selassie and Empress Menin is an epic love story and. Uh, mate selection. She was the daughter of Sihin Mikael and a great uh, nobleman uh, who was uh, Asfa Janitar of Ambesel. And I, boy, I mean, no, I say my pronunciation is not the best, but uh, see with me because we're telling the story. So she comes from the daughter of, of uh, Ras Mikael, whose name was Sehin Mikael. And she was the daughter of Asfa 
janitor of the Ambassel region. So these were noble people. She had a noble birth, born into a noble house. You know, she was a princess. But her blessing was also her curse because she was given in marriage to secure alliances from a young age. You know, she had married four times before his, she married to His Majesty, and she married His Majesty when she was only the age of 20. You know, so she, her first marriage was at the age of nine. So she was a victim of child marriage. Um, we have to look at it through the lens of the time because in those times you weren't guaranteed to live to even 30. You know, this was an ancient time um, when we talk about Ethiopia of the 19th century, you know, the 1890s, them time there. We're also coming off of the Kefu Khan, which was the evil days, one of the worst famine. So as soon as a woman see her period, she was married off and, you know, Empress Menen had that fate and had children, had four children during this period of um, turbulence where these mar um, political marriages were being dissolved and she had no say over this. She's a little girl. You can imagine. Um, now, Ras Mikael has a son named Lijayasu. So that would have been Empress Menin's uncle. Um, his sister, Sahain Mikael, have a daughter. And Lijayasu realized when he see the young uh, Tofarai uh, Makonin, you know, there's an energy. You know, they were at some functions and according to the testimony, there was some energy there and Lijayasu, not a fool, so he notices and at this time, you know, there's murmurings because Tafara is not a normal youth or Tafedi um, from the Ethiopian perspective. You know, diligent in his studies, excellent in all of his doings, you know, quiet, reserved, but he's an overachiever, you know. And among the princes, this is, is noticeable, you know. He also is controlling one of the most powerful armies because of the, uh, the loyal soldiers that he inherited from his father, Ras Makonin. So it's not a youth without him, Bakitiv, you know, out of Harar region. So everybody's looking at this youth. And Lich the far I noticed that he and the niece have a vibes. So... A union is arranged. Ras Mikael arranges this, you know, and, and things happen. They are married in 1911, July 27th. Um, and this is where uh, one of the reasons that I got married, because studying His Majesty, I saw that he was married to Empress Menin. And this is why in Rastafari, marriage is such an important institution. And I'm going to be doing a lot of content on the institution of marriage and the importance of marriage. And because it's Empress Men in Earth Strong, she was married to His Majesty in 1911. I think it's important because marriage is the building block of the society. Marriage is not about romantic love like how it was said in the West. And I did a, a, a show on courting and dating where we talked about the origin of, of this ideal of, of romantic love. Um, Asian time and throughout history, marriage has always been about families and uh, the, the unification of families. You know, families vetted um, suitors for their children. That's why you have to come with a dowry in some cultures. You have to bring two cow. You know, these things were important as the bedrock of society and it's broken down not only in the wider society but among Rastafari because we have so many broken homes so I want to use this earth strong of Empress Men and told my brethren again how do you select what were the qualities His Majesty might have seen in Empress Menin and when you, you look at the speech he gave at her passing he said there was nothing that they disagreed on you know uh, they, she never let a third party come in and intervene in any problems that they had with each other. If they had any issues, nobody but them would know. And these are the things. That, so discretion is a key trait 
you know, when you're looking at uh, for a wife, you know, you have to look for a woman who carries herself with discretion. So anybody that's too out there, the youths them would say for the streets, we leave them out there. You know, um, these are things we need to be teaching our young brethren so that they select queens in this Armageddon because it's Armageddon time we see the inflation the cost of food skyrocketing so we don't have no time right now to joke around in the streets right now as Rastafari we have to return to our militant origin you know time to couple up family up build up the thing right now so anyhow we return to the story the loyalty of Empress Menin is legendary because as I said her family was in opposition to the jazz match to Farai um, ascending to the throne because the throne was promised to her uncle Lijayasu and you know Lijayasu was being courted by the Turks the Ottoman Turks and the Germans this was during the global war in Europe you know around the same time as World War One and so this is all this intrigue is happening and Lijayasu has a dream allegedly to unite the Muslims and the Christians so he also has lineage you know his father was a powerful Muslim Muhammad Ali before he was converted forcibly by Emperor Johannes Casamarcha and I did a video on Casamarcha check back in the catalog um, it's also in, in Haile Selassie's Ethiopia, this history that I'm talking about. So, Lija Yasu, you know, is looking at his father, he's looking at his mother, he's saying, I have the Solomonic bloodline on this line. There's bloodline coming from the, the Mohammed bloodline, unification uh, and restore. So he had a great vision. However, in Ethiopia, to sit on the throne of David, you have to put Yeshua, the Christ first. And there's no, no I have a song. <clears throat> the way Rastafari crown, I talk about it. We come to tell them about holy papalis intrigue. In fighting the Queen Solomon see. Well, Empress I do want her family to lead. Well, King Michael want him some to lead. But King Michael, now watch the orphan Mary to him peace. Who get up every day and a study and a read? He work and he pray every day. He achieve them say you go leader every ancient leader just wave us the far right crown and come trouble. Me come fit and them Baba Babylon they falling down to far right smuggle you. Me come fit and them out wave us the far right crown and come trouble. We come to tell them from a Babylon You're falling down to far right This uncle you Well, that's my call Son was having a good time When he should mind The affairs of the state Cause he's descend from the great line Of men that like the second But he's stepping on toes Of his elders Treat his women like hoes He exposed Now we working with the Ottoman Turks Say he's descending from Muhammad But that's not how this works See the crown was anointed by the Orthodox Church So if you are ruling as I don't have to put Christ first Talk about Muhammad That's a disqualified fire and you know he was excommunicated um, because there was evidence presented that he was um, you know uh, Islamic or, or or showing some outwardly Islamic um, signs and the church excommunicated him and then Empress Aditu was Menelik's daughter and uh, Chazmach Tafari um, was given the title of Ras and heir to the throne so basically he now is looking to sit on the throne so this caused great conflict so you can imagine his wife family you know his wife's family his uncle her uncle her grandfather you know um, her family you know she would she would be taken care of but she chose to stand with our king man Rastafari and 
served him in such a manner where unquestionable you know this is the type of queen and she was an asset to him you know when you read the autobiography um, you get some isomony and then in other works you know you get isomony about how Empress Menin you know when at one time when his majesty was being accused of betrayal against Empress Zaidito who was Menelik's daughter and trap his majesty and his empress men and came with the army his majesty private army led the army surrounded the place and allowed for her king man to exit that day with his life you know and also that show of strength but that's a queen that's there you can anticipate don't hear from our king man concern we're not gonna be a victim we're gonna mobilize but at the same time you try find three or four speeches of Empress Men and it's difficult she's not out there in the front trying to be seen trying to be heard she works quietly she's building schools on October 4th 1930 Empress Menon opened the doors to the Empress Menon School for Girls girls from all over the Empire were brought to the Empress Menon School to receive a modern education the first of its kind, the Empress Men in School for Girls provided Ethiopian girls with equal access to a modern education, which had previously only been available to boys in Ethiopia. Now, in addition to learning household skills, were given an education that allowed them the opportunity to stand side by side with their male counterparts as active life partners. Some of the young women educated at this school went on to further their education abroad and became administrators, company directors and members of parliament. To raise the standard of handicrafts in the country, Menin later expanded the school to include training in useful trades such as rug making, spinning and dyeing of wool and cotton, weaving, silver work, woodwork and basket making. Classes were state of the art for the time. Classes were also taught in French and subjects included the sciences and mathematics as well as household management, dressmaking and physical training. When this girls' school was established, there was strong opposition to women's education in Ethiopia. This was due to popular opinion that an educated woman would not look after the house, while prejudice held that the husband of a literate wife would not live long as his spouse would resort to curses and other wicked practices to kill him. On April 26, 1954, after two and a half decades of delivering education and vocational training to countless deserving students, the Empress Menin Girls School celebrated its 25th anniversary. The Emperor and the Empress as well as thousands of others attended this celebration. What a joyful occasion for Empress Menin to know that so many young women from all over Ethiopia had been educated at a school with first-rate facilities. In the years since its official opening in 1930, many girls have managed to complete their education here and have proceeded to attend higher education and gain employment in governmental offices and in the private sector. What a joyful occasion for Empress Menin to know that so many young women from all over Ethiopia had been educated at a school with first-rate facilities and that several alumni of the school had contributed to the development of the country. The school's curriculum exposed women for the first time to the sciences, while the art and handicraft departments of the school were instrumental in, in improving and expanding the traditional heritage of paintings, as well as fabric and garment production. She's building health centers. You know, she's building churches. She had the church. She had the church where the Ark of the Covenant rebuilt. You know, she um, abolished um, child marriage in Ethiopia. Worked hard to end that practice that she herself had suffered. So, Empress Menin was such an example during the war. You know, mobilizing the nurses, speaking out against war. Um, this was Empress Menin, perfect helpmeet, you know, or helpmate, black print for the Rastafari woman. The Empress ordered the translation and publication of 14 sacred books. The proceeds of the 3,800 copies sold, which amounted to 12,000 Ethiopian burr, 
were donated to St. Paul's Grammar School for disadvantaged children. The Empress also donated a large plot of land and houses from her mother's estate in the Kofa area to this school. Also that year, their majesties opened the first teaching hospital in Ethiopia. So on this time of her earth strong, let us celebrate Empress Menin, um, elevated to the highest heights by our kingman and also this concept of the redeemer you know I, I i meditate on this because his majesty was in a position to redeem his um empress men from a life of of misery you know because all of these child marriages she was not happy you know and we can see even um as she uh, progressed in life, you know, she had health challenges. And a lot of these things, if we trace them forward, we probably could trace forward to, you know, the, the life that she lived as a, as a young um, child, you know. It could not have been an easy road. So the fact that she was able to link with Farai and the love that they shared, they demonstrated there was another incident where His Majesty almost drowned and Empress Menin was on the way to um, her brother's funeral. One of her brothers died and instead of going to the funeral, she turned around her caravan and this is before cars, this is before roads, this is riding on horses and donkey uh, months to get to where we're going. She turned back around when she heard about um, our king man almost died and went to, to attend to him, you know, make sure she nursed him forward to health. So throughout her life, she always put his majesty first. There was no questions, the type of character and the life they lived and the joy that they shared, you know. Um, she couldn't stay with him in exile in England because the weather didn't agree with her. And she stayed in Jerusalem where she also uh, gave up her crown you know, because of praying for her people and saying that she would give up her crown if Ethiopia was restored. Um, that crown was the crown eternal that was placed on her head. And, you know, through all of this time, we see that Empress Menin left the physical form in 1961. His Majesty have a famous speech where he spoke about Empress Menin. We'll put some of that here in the episode as well. Um, so, you know, but we never see His Majesty remarry. We never see him with another sister after that time publicly. You know, the respect that Empress Menin hold, you know what I mean, is beyond reproach. And that's the example for my brethren that we want to aspire to. So we have to look for these qualities in a sister can't just be that she pretty or she sexy or just because she like you. No. Look for these qualities. Is Empress Menin uh, put her life on the line for her king man and to fulfill his vision and they reach the highest of heights that can be reached on this earth. King and king of king, king of kings and queen of queens. So let this be an example. You know, we have to give thanks for our Empress Menin. We have to give thanks for the example that she has laid eternally for the Rastafari woman as a feminine woman. This is something that is, you know, a, a big point of contention with modern women of today. They become very masculine. We have a black print of a feminine woman, royal. You, you can't find a picture of Empress Menin um, in her no pants highly educated woman you know what I mean so it's not because she was educated she's masculine no you can be strong not because she was feminine she was weak no she exuded strength she exuded femininity she was not in the front always have to be heard her strength was quiet nurturing motherly you know and we're not saying that women must not be vocal but that don't mean that they need to be out in the front you know every woman need to, to do that you know or that we have to put that pressure 
for the sister and them to be on the front line. No, they are capable. But we need our sister, and particularly as Rastafari brethren in the home, caring for our youth, schooling our youth. We have no schools. We have no uh, infrastructure for the youths and the outcomes are self-explanatory when we look at our youths and the retention rates of our Rastafari youths. We have to provide the space for them to be within their full feminine nurturing selves as brethren. Time to hold the line. Step up. I'm a Gideon. Time to reveal who you are in this time. So that's the episode um, we're bigging up Empress Menon uh, for this episode um, if you have any sounds on Empress Menon you would like to share share them in the comments we are marching forward to a thousand subscribers the aim is to monetize the channel so that we can grow the content the aim is to bring front line of repatriation of an authentic Rastafari voice we are uh, building the Rastafari brethren to lead a prosperous Rastafari future. You know, this, the channel is mostly uh, brethren, so we take on the responsibility. Sistrin are welcome, and we need Sistrin here because we need the voices of the Sistrin to balance. So I give thanks that my first two people in the Lion Pride and Patreon was a brethren and a Sistrin. So that to I was like the divine blessing, you know. Uh, the two of them I get lonely now so we need more ones in the Patreon but we give thanks that that balance is there although the, the audience is 95% male but we're building and we're going to take our time and, and build so that we can you know go to Ethiopia I would love to go to Wolo and see where Empress Menin was born and you know bring all of them things there too the lion voice family and these kind of things you know as we as we build up the infrastructure so invest in the platform and we will bring the content um i also remember we have signed uh you can get a signed copy of highly Selassie's ethiopia the rise of the priestly warrior kings this is my first book uh, i wrote it like you would write an epic fantasy like a game of thrones like a lord of the rings but about Ethiopian history, so all real facts. But we we wrote it, you know, uh, from the perspective of some of the characters and going into some of the history. Um, so read it. Let me know what you think. Um, we're gonna start working on volume two very soon. Again, join the Patreon if you want to support these works. Um, and we have a lot more content coming. I'm traveling. Uh, so we'll have some more exclusive interviews on the Lion Talk. We're going to uh, be doing some more topics on Lion Law. Uh, so just stay tuned because the time has come for the Lions to tell our own story. And this is the Lion Voice. Lion Voice. <laughs> Well, Eilis Lassie, the first of the Almighty, and this is the Charles Match Quasi. Well, the Global Groundation, this one is for the Black family. Well, since we're talking about the Queens, then, what I have to talk about Empress Men, then, well, then, man, I'll be go pal him, girlfriend, that's nothing about Empress Men, then, well, then, go on chant until the world end, what I have to talk about Empress Men, then, well, then. All the girls we defend How fit about Empress Men then? Well then, married in 1911 With a love that come from heaven oh. Well then, you can tell all of your brethren She raised her little Assy I children oh. Then, and she never deviate Never complain when the king a work late no, no. Always a food up on the youth template Who was a joy if you see a smile on her face oh. So full of grace as she be batik and hate Well then all the people rejoice yeah. Empress Menden are the children's choice oh, oh, Well then, yeah. since you're talking about the queens then What I have to talk about Impress Empress Men. Men then Well then, a man a big up all him girlfriend Nothing, nothing about Impress Empress Men, Men then yeah. Well then, if we chant until the world end What I have to talk about Impress Empress Men, Men then Well then, all the girls we defend Half it about Impress Empress Men, Men then Well then 
When the Jaya sued the Deco We the dirty plan fi come destroy the family One come separate the king from the queen uh-huh. With the Ottoman team come set up a dirty scheme yeah. King Rastafari ride and come in uh-huh. And destroy those boys We try intervene mm-hmm. Them press men then so pure and clean mm-hmm. And this last year I me no say him a the supreme Tell Babylon say ya dream them a dream We yeah. come to burn down them Roman scheme uh-huh. Well then since you talking about the queens then Half it about them press men then Well then Could I chant until the world end Half it about them press men then Well then I'm gonna be go pal him girlfriend That's nothing about them press men then Well then All the girls we defend Half it about them press men then Well then Queen mother for the earth Remember she gave a little lassie youth birth World War II she was so hard at work Heal all the soldiers when they get hurt oh, yeah, So full of yeah, grace yeah. she dressed up in a long skirt Use her money if she build school and church Just oh, to smile on the face that make me know what life's worth oh, Well then All the people rejoice and press men in the children's, children's choice, choice. See that.